My name is Dustin Meyer. I am brother to Nicole Meyer. My family is the direct result of domestic violence. On February 1st, 2011, my sister was killed by her, at the time, ex-boyfriend, Jesse Oakley, and immediately after killing her, he took his own life. Months prior to the murder-suicide that took place, my family and I spent a lot of time with Jesse Oakley, getting to know Jesse as her boyfriend, and the life that they had was different than the life that was portrayed to my family. There was never any signs to us that there was problems in the relationship. Jesse would take our family out for dinner and wine and dine us, buy my sister lavish gifts. My sister always made it seem like everything was perfect. Jesse always made things look like it was perfect. They both had on a fake front that nobody could identify that there was a problem. And now it's too late to do anything about it because nobody ever talked about it. We heard from the Noka Police Department meeting with them after the crime scene investigation. And they let us know that there was a couple other times that my sister had contacted the police to be escorted off the property because Jesse was being violent. She never told us about it. The police never told us about it. About six months before her murder, my sister separated from Jesse. We didn't know the reason for it. All we knew is maybe things weren't working out and I wasn't the type of brother that asked a lot of questions. Nikki got her own place and Jesse stayed back and lived at the townhome that they had together. The townhome was under my sister's name, so my sister had been paying the rent on it and now that she had moved out, it was Jesse's responsibility to take over rent payments. She received a phone call from a landlord about a week prior to her death stating that no one's paid the last few months of rent. So my sister went over to the landlord thinking it was going to hurt her credit and paid for the rent. She called Jesse and asked for the money, and Jesse said, I got a check for you, come over and pick it up. The company that my sister worked at, there was two women that worked next to her in the cubicles, and they were in a separate office. So the three of them were really open, communicating each day. When my sister stated that there was an issue, and she was nervous to go get the check from Jesse, both of them were hesitant to say anything to her because they had never heard any problems about Jesse prior. They only heard the good. Yet they were nervous. They told her, don't go over alone. Have a police officer come with you. Meet him at a popular restaurant, a gas station, some neutral site where there's people around. My sister went alone. When she didn't show up for work the next day, they were the ones that called the police and the police did an initial check on the house. The day that she died, we had received a phone call from my mom saying that her work contacted her and was wondering where Nikki was at. Me being the way I was, I shrugged it off and said, she's probably overslept. Maybe her cell phone died, maybe her alarm clock's not working. And when I got the phone call from my dad that they had found her dead body. Her vehicle was still parked in the driveway. Her purse was still on the counter and Jesse had put a bullet through her mouth. All the reports came back later that there was a 30 minute separation between her death and his death. After he shot my sister in the mouth, he wiped the blood off her face, played with her hair, lay down next to her body, and put a bullet through his head also. The way it worked out is my parents were sitting in their kitchen and a lone squad car drove down the driveway, pulled next to their garage and got out. And immediately my parents knew it wasn't good. The officers came inside the house and told my parents that their daughter was dead. Sitting down with the Anoka County Sheriff's Department, we learned a lot about Jesse Oakley's history and his previous life that he had that was never brought up to us or Nikki never mentioned. Jesse was previously married and his wife had a restraining order on him for domestic violence. Knowing that there was domestic violence in the past and my sister still didn't bring it up to us was something that still really hurts. Nikki never gave us the opportunity to help. I think if my sister would have contacted me, and let me know what was going on between her and Jesse and her thoughts on her and Jesse. She'd still be alive today. I always hear people today say that parents should never have to bury their child. Me being a father today, I would never want to bury a child. Once my sister died, my parents couldn't do any of that. The life was sucked out of them. They didn't want to leave the house. Um, it was like they didn't have a heart left. So, 
I always ask, should a brother ever have to bury their sister? We buried my sister in Cleveland, Minnesota, which is a few miles away from my parents' place. And still today, I bring my young daughter out to the cemetery. My sister's headstone overlooks a beautiful lake. It's a beautiful place to bring my wife and daughter during the summer. A couple years ago, I joined the Waters Church where I learned about an organization called BKA Ministries. When I learned about BKA right away, it set into my heart as something that I wish existed before my sister was murdered. I wonder today if my sister would have had BKE around her, if she would still be here today. If she would have had some place to go to, to talk about her issues. If she would have had some place to hear other women that have the same struggles as her. If she would have had some type of guidance from somebody saying, it's okay not to go home tonight. She would still be alive. When I heard about BKE, I wanted to get involved immediately. I wanted to tell my story. I want to make sure there's not another Nikki Meyer out there that doesn't know what to do, is scared, maybe not sleeping well at night, doesn't know she wants to come home from work the next day, doesn't feel like she wants to let her friends know that there's a problem at home because it's going to make her look like a lesser of a person. We need to have BKE around today so that women have a safe place to go, to seek help, get help, and enhance their lives. Nobody's should be buried six feet under because you thought somebody was gonna change, because you thought somebody loved you, or he only yelled at me once or that he only hit me once.